all right guys i have started recording uh, the session and i'm going to share my screen as well now and let me know when you can see my screen can you see my screen okay so this is the uft tool as you can see that i have uft 1501 this is you can't okay uh can you see if you have any other on your skype right if you see that if you have like put your cursor on your skype and can you see if you see any other screen in the ta in the taskbar can you see the skype and put your cursor on skype Do you see any other screen? Okay, so in this case, you can drop off and then just join the call. Do not restart your computer, just drop off from this call and rejoin. Okay, and let me know when you are rejoined. Now you can see, okay. Now we have uh, UFT 1501. This is the latest version of UFT. Okay, previously this tool was like, uh, you know, is it? Okay. Jaman, can you still hear me? Jaman, are you in the call? It seems Jaman is dropped out. So let me add Jaman in this call. Give me one. Okay, Jaman, can you hear me now? Okay, so this is UFT 1501. This is the latest, latest version of this software. This is a vendor tool. This is a licensed product. Any industry, if they want to use it, they'll have to purchase the license. The cost of the licensing is very high. Only big organization in, in terms like medium or big organization, in most cases, they are capable of using this software because of the licensing cost. So previously this tool used to like when we were learning uh, automation in the beginning like from Maxud Bhai, he used to use quick test professional, right Maxud Bhai? It, it was quick test professional on that time. So this quick test professional tool gradually they have improved it they have improved it uh, to uh, UFT 11 and then um, UFT. Jaman, are you still in the call? Can you hear me? Okay. 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 It was okay. So uh, they used to uh, call it um, UFT 11, UFT 11.5, UFT 12, 12.5, and then UFT 14, 14.5, and then the latest version is UFT 15, Unified Functional Testing version 15. Now, Unified Functional Testing version 15, this is the latest tool. Again, this is a licensed product. You have to spend a lot of money to buy the license. The benefit, okay, why people will be Java, uh, the other part that you are doing, some of you are doing or you have done, you, uh, uses Java language, Eclipse, you Eclipse and Java language, uh, which we are calling Selenium. Over there, it is free. There is no cost. Versus if you want to use this, you have to spend a lot of money to buy license. So why people will be buying, spending a lot of money to buy this tool, whereas there is Java there, free. Okay, Java, Selenium, that is open source, open source technology, that is free. A lot of people, they use it, that free tool versus this one on the java part which is free open source and free 
you have to have superior coding skill like you have to know java language a little bit not like you do not have to be a java developer to use selenium you do not have to be a java developer but you have to know some sort of java language there still it takes more skill to do automation using java versus when you buy license for this uft it is easier here it is much easier to do automation we use bb scripting language wise we use bb scripting here bb scripting is easier to learn it is kind of english language plain english language type it is easy to learn it is lightweight and lot of functionality you can do it easily by drag and drop you can do automation basically by drag and drop in this particular um, what is called in this particular uh, technology uft technology okay now yeah this is basically the difference between that selenium and that uft right and both of them the the same purpose we use both of them for automating software automating manual testing process that uft tool has some other advantages versus that open source java technology what is the uh, what is the other um, you know one of the other main feature that uft support right you can automate microsoft word excel this type of uh, you know desktop application these are not web application right you can automate even desktop application that is not web application like facebook like wellsfargo.com like twitter.com right by using selenium you can automate only those web application right those internet application versus using uft you can automate both web application and desktop application or client server application right client server application like you will see that a uh, lot of cbs lot of organization they use a portal that is that you have to install locally in your computer like for using facebook do you have to install anything guys no but there are few software we call it client server software client server application for that you have to install the client part of the software in your local computer and then when you uh, run that client part then it will connect you to the internet but you have to use that particular installed component of the application to use that application so that is client server but by using uft you can automate web application client server application windows application or desktop application right all kind of application because it is you have to pay for this right versus using java although a lot of people use java for automating web application right so uft has a specific use it can be you can automate many things by uft it has usability wise it has more usability okay the more application you can automate by uft does it make sense guys okay so um we are we are going to automate a simple script today by using uft so i'm going to uh, to to write a simple script right to write a simple script let's say that you know we are google employee or google has asked us to test something for them okay so i'm going to um, write a simple test case manual test case first in uh, using let's say uh, in in word i'm going to write a simple test case and then i'll be automating this test case by using uft so what is that test case uh, that i am going to write is this um, so let's say that i'm going to write a test case uh, let me bring my document so uh, the test case name that i have is uh, um, uh, verify verify google search functionality okay and then let's say that i'm creating a simple test case here i'm going to insert a table here 
I'm going to create uh, five rows. Oops, I made a mistake. Okay. So here, SL mark one in the uh, action. No, no, you just follow. We are going to do a lot of things today. You just follow. I'll be giving you the recording and then you will be doing it by yourself. Uh, action and then expected result. Expected result. Let's keep up with this. Um, uh, when you do coding in Selenium, use Java. In UFT, use you use BB scripting. BB scripting is much easier than Java. Okay. Uh, so first step, let's say um, open browser and navigate to um, www.google.com. Okay. Let's say that web page. What is your expectation? Web page will be uh, loaded menu uh, um, logo will be will be displayed okay number two um, type type let's say what do you want to type skills type skills in the search uh, text box so what is your expectation let's say that uh, cheese will be displayed cheese will be displayed in the text box number three um, press enter or we'll see press enter so um, results will be displayed. Okay, number four. Click on, click on, um, on a link from the search result. Result. Okay, let's say page will be loaded. Let's say keep it simple here. This is our test case. Okay. Now let's go to here. Okay. You will see that first of all you have to create a new test. I'm going to create a new test. Can you see this location? You by clicking on this three dot, three dots here, you select a part where you want to save your script. Let's say I want to save my script under my C drive, let's say that this is my uh, PC under my C drive. I want to create a UFT script folder. UFT script folder, let's say select. And then I'm, I'm going to name my script, I'm going to name it as it is, uh, what is my test case name? The name of my test case is verify Google search functionality can name it in that way so I'm going there I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to remove all of these spaces from the name and then I'm going to say create my script if I create my script my script is created here now remember in java your execution starts from the main method right here your execution starts from the action from your action so so let's say that there are record and run configuration there are record and run configuration we will go there in the beginning probably we will do a little bit on record and run and then we'll do actual coding, okay? Now, if you go to record, and can you see this record and run settings, you go there, 
and can you see web and windows applications right web applications means those internet applications windows applications means the applications those are locally installed in your computer you can automate those as well so for now we are going to automate application can you see record and run on any open browser that means like you can record and run on any open browser or we can specify we can specify what website we want to record okay let's say that here can you see open the following uh, we want to open local browser and then on the local browser they have given a url let's do a recording on google instead of their url let me keep their url aside uh, somewhere and then we uh, for google what is the www.google.com right this is our url where we are going to do the recording so we will go there we will paste our url here and then where do you want to do the recording right you have to make sure that the application is working on chrome application is working on internet explorer and other browser let's say you are going to do the recording on internet explorer okay and then can you see do not record and run on open browser if you have a browser that you didn't open by the by your program by your uft then we are asking do not record by using that and then can you see the close the browser when the test closes i do not want to close the browser at this point i'm going to keep it okay and i'm going to say apply and then i'm going to say okay and then i'm going to can you see there is a record button i'm going to say okay when i click on record now let's see what happens can you see it is opening a browser for me and in the browser it should bring uh, www.google.com okay can you see it was able to bring google browser okay so now let's take a look so let's say that next step uh, to verify this logo right to verify this logo we will come there we can create checkpoint but uh, first of all let me see if i can type something here is right is okay and then press enter okay so that's all let's see that and then uh, there was another requirement click on a link right and then verify something from this link okay then let's say we are done i'm going to stop recording can you see it said that we have three lines recorded can you see this three here it is saying that three lines are recorded so i'm going to say stop okay so if you take a look here right let me close this browser that was opened by my program and close it and then if i say play right play and when you play can you see these options you will select this temporary run results folder and if you say run then let's see what happens so it will it should open the browser and then can you see it is going to type cheese and then it is going to click on this right and then it is done now can you see what we did and what has happened because we have ran that code can you see what happened can everyone see what happened do you have any question of this okay mm -hmm. go ahead okay you don't have any question so let's say that uh, to make this more visible to you i'm going to do a little bit stuff here i'm going to put this and then I'm going to do a highlight. I always do highlight. I like highlighting. I'll be putting a highlight as well before this object as well. I'll explain further. You will understand what I'm doing here. Highlight. And then I'll be putting another highlight here. now if you run it 
So can you see every time it will open a browser, right? Every time it will open a browser and it will keep that browser open. So if you keep opening browser, it is a problem. So what, what you will be doing, we'll be doing something later on, you'll see. But for now, let me run this code again. Now, can you see what highlight is doing? Okay, now, now let's say that according to our test step, when you open the browser, the first thing that we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be verifying the logo, right? Do you understand? We're supposed to be verifying the logo. So to, to I'm going to discuss a lot of things a lot further, but um, let me give you this introduction first. So when you have recorded, can you see it has recorded your script here. Whatever you did in the browser, it was able to capture those things and it has created the code itself. That is what like you have to make it like makes it pretty easier for people to automate things, right? You can record and then you can replay and then you can verify things. I'm going to discuss how you can verify things, but can you see that it was able to uh, highlight that search text box? Can you see web edit? Can you see page? Can you see browser? Okay, now it has. Go ahead. What is that? Uh, from UFT, you want to run uh, Eclipse and you want to run the code, Eclipse code? Oh, uh, you, want, you want me to bring those test cases and run it from UFT? Eclipse code, you cannot, you cannot bring the... So I, I got it what you are saying. That means you are saying run this Eclipse, okay? So you want me to uh, run Eclipse via UFT code and then So is it, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So uh, code that we have written in Eclipse, right? That is Java code, it will not work here, first of all. If you want to run that code and uh, copy it from there and if you want to paste it here, that will not work. Yeah, this is BB scripting. That is Java. Okay. Okay. So, Nahid Bhai, was I able to answer your question or you have further? From this UFT, as I said, 
uh, you can run the locally installed uh, software. So Microsoft Word or even probably, I'm not sure I haven't tried, probably you'll be able to run this Eclipse as well. We will learn it like how you can Right, so as I said from UFT, we can, we can run Eclipse. We can bring the Eclipse program, right? Let's say that I have Eclipse opened here, right? I close it. Now you can write UFT code to open that Eclipse program and then probably you'll be able to click on the play button in the Eclipse ID to run Eclipse code, I mean Selenium code, okay? You might be able to do that, yeah. I haven't tried that, but you might be able to do that. Okay, was I able to answer your question like that? Very good. So we will do a lot of things. Now, let's come back here. So as you can see here, that we have browser, right? Under browser, we have page. And then under page, we have an object web edit. Right. When you go to your uh, particular browser, right, you will see that uh, in the beginning, if you go back all the way back. Can you see web edit means this text box? Okay. Whenever you see that web edit, that means the text box. So if you take a look at your code here, we have a web edit, and then that web edit is contained in a page, and that page is contained in a browser. Now, when I play my, can you see the object hierarchy here? The individual object and then the page and then the browser, okay? So this is the child object and this is the parent. And for this page, again, it has a parent, browser. Browser is the parent of the page. Now, when I click on play button, you can see that it is able to run the code. Now. There is a background mechanism. What is that background mechanism? When you record, remember that this code we have recorded and then from this line, I have created a highlighted line, highlight, highlighted line, right? But there is a mechanism that is working to make sure that this, it is able to click on a particular object. It is able to run your code. What is that? If you take a look in the left hand side, can you see there is a local? Can you see there is a local? If you double click on that, if you double click on that, you will see that it will bring that object repository, guys. Can you see the object repository? That is where UFT make your life much easier versus Selenium. You can create visual object repository here. When you have recorded your script, what it did, it has recorded all of the attribute of whatever objects you have interacted with. It has created it has recorded all of the objects description in your object repository here. Now, this is local object repository. Remember, when you do your recording, when you do your recording, it will only bring your object to the local object repository. And there is another concept called shared object repository that we are going to learn later. But in local object repository, the, all of the objects that you have interacted with the page, in the page, all of the objects will be coming to the local object repository. Now, if you take a look, if you, can you see Google, right? Can you see this is the browser? What is the object type? Can you see browser? And for that browser, can you see all of the attribute of that browser? If you click on plus, you will see it has a lot of other attribute. This is only for the browser. And then if you come, can you see the Google search uh, cheese page. Can you see? This is the page. So first of all, the browser. And then if you go a little bit down, you see the page, right? If you expand and then you see the cheese, right? Can you see this? Now, let me go back in the browser and let me type cheese, right? And then press enter. Now, um, if you come here, right, if you go back to your object repository, 
and then change Wikipedia, Wikipedia, right? If you, can you see this highlighter here? Can you see it is highlighting this? Let me do this again if you haven't seen it. So if I put, can you see, I am putting my pointer here and I'm trying to highlight. Can you see it is highlighting here? So that means this is the object it has captured in the object repository, right? And then when you come to the Google browser, can you see the search? Can you see there are two objects, Google search and then can you see this text box, okay? Now let's go back in your browser, right? Now if you go to your object repository, let me go back to the object repository and can you see the search? And then this is a web edit, that means that is a text box. If you highlight, can you see where it is highlighting? Do you, do you see what I'm doing here? I'm doing in terms of object repository. So recorded, when you have recorded, it has captured all of the objects those we have interacted with in the object repository. Does it make sense up to this? And how do you bring that object repository, right? You double click on this local and then you see all of the objects here all of the objects that you have interacted with. If you delete an object from here, your code will not work. Your code is working because it is getting all the mechanism, all of the identifying attribute from the object repository. Okay. So let's move forward from there. Uh, do you have any question up to this? Yeah, we can do a lot of changes we will do it eventually for now let's not worry about this uh, changes but we are going to do a lot of changes in the object repository okay nipa is it good are we good up to this yeah. how about um, uh, amit and jaman are you guys okay with this whatever we did up to this yes jaman can you hear me as well okay very very good now so According to my test case, right? According to my test case, I had to verify the logo. When, when I open uh, google.com, I have to verify the logo. Logo means this, right? I have to verify this logo. So you can verify, there are so many ways to verify, but we are going to understand checkpoints at this point. Checkpoint, okay? What is checkpoint? So if you come here, you you are opening, can you see your browser is open from your, um, from your record and run settings, right? You have record, record and run settings and over there you have specified that you want to open this Google, right? And you want to open it in what browser? In Internet Explorer. You can specify, no, 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 I, I want to run it in Chrome. I want to run it in Chromium. I want to run it in Firefox, but for now we have selected that we want to run it in Internet Explorer. Okay, now if I go back, now if I want to, so what, what is the first thing when I open the browser? The first requirement is I have to make sure that the logo is displayed. So to do that, to do that, I can do this in multiple way and I can do it, let's say that from here as well. Okay, let me go there. Hey, record web event run resource. This is a tools. Okay, and then go to checkpoint. Okay, let me do this. Right click. Okay, and can you see insert step? Uh, not this probably let me see inside the next checkpoint debug enable disable okay so I'm going to uh, from this point I'm going to let me see add okay add a new business component new application add new test add system okay so here I'm going to add a checkpoint. Okay, I'm going to add a checkpoint for 
to verify the logo okay but when i if i click on uh, this if i click on this particular um what is called um, i'm looking for something you know okay if i click on this record it will open another browser right so let's say that i do not want to open another browser so what i will do i will go there and instead of opening another browser i will say record and run on any open browser that means i am giving it permission to record on any open browser okay so i have already opened a browser here so i can record it from there so what i'm going to do here i'm going to say okay and then i'm going to click on that record again now it will not be opening another browser because i already have a browser right so here what i'm going to do can you see insert checkpoint i'm going to say insert a standard checkpoint there are so many types of checkpoint for now we will be learning standard checkpoint i'm going to say standard checkpoint now after selecting standard checkpoint where do i want to put that standard checkpoint i want to put that standard checkpoint on this logo i'll be clicking on this logo and then can you see here i'll say okay here and then in the standard checkpoint can you see that particular logo has so many attribute okay now you can select what attribute that you want to put or keep as your standard what you want to check so let's say you want to check there is a href i do not want that href let's say i want to make sure that the object that i'm going to verify that it is the tag is image okay i'm i want to make sure that if there is any text here i am able to see the text and this is a image i want to make sure that the name is image right or the source right the source is this you can keep as many attribute available attribute as as you like it will give you a list and you can select the attribute that that when you are checking make sure that this particular object is a image it is it has this link it has you know it is html tag is image right you can select as much as possible and then say okay okay so what is happening now i'm done with that checkpoint and you will see that here in your code right in your code there is a line here can you see google google 2 and then image google right on that particular image now check checkpoint i have a checkpoint on that particular image okay now if you go back to your object repository right in your object repository you will see can you see uh, it is under the page of google 2 can you see under the page of google 2 you expand you expand and can you see this image right can you see actually i think uh, let me see one thing here i have one person one hundred percent there are few uh, setup that i might have to uh, configure but for now it is this object and can you see this checkpoint right this is the checkpoint remember checkpoint and output objects i have set up this checkpoint and it is under the checkpoint and what i have configured i have configured you check the image uh, it is html tag is image and then i have asked uh, can you see um inner text it doesn't have inner text but it, if it has a text i have asked it okay make sure that text is there the name is image right the checkpoint is there now what does it mean for you right if you take a look if you go back to your browser and on this one on this particular one can you see that if you can you see this fact element guys can you see i have right click on this particular object and i'm saying inspect element okay now you do one more time this particular um inspect element or Okay. or there is a can you see there is a cursor here take your cursor and then um, let me see if i can use this okay this one right so this is the object if you come here if you come here this is the right can you see image img right this is a this is a image can you see img and then um 
it has some other attribute this is the actual code this is the actual code and in the code you see that it is it is a image so that is what uft automatically captured all of the attribute that object has and we have asked it okay make sure that these objects are present now let me go back so now i have a checkpoint and also this is my checkpoint and on what object on this image object and also i am going to copy this and i'm going to put a highlight on this object dot highlight okay now there will be a problem you will see if i run the code right if i run the code it will not be starting the browser and it will try to verify it will try to highlight the object but it will not be opening the browser can you anyone, anyone tell me why it is not opening the browser what what is the so i have what is that so so remember we have changed the setting if we, it will be opening the browser it will be opening google but we have changed it here we are, we are asking record and run on any open browser when you have these options selected right then what will happen you have to start the browser by code so what you will have to do you will have to write a line of code system util dot run system util dot run right and then what browser you want to run you want to run chrome or you want to run iexplore.exe internet explorer if you want to run internet explorer you have to put iexplore.exe and then what do you want to open in internet explorer you want to open www.google.com right now if you run it okay it will be opening the browser and it will be opening google and basically it is kind of pointing to a different place but you know you see that um, it was able to verify now let me do this can you see now the browser is open and it will like every time you run your code there will be another browser right so let's say if you run one mm -hmm. okay yeah i can hear no no you cannot modify the application you have to verify the functionality of the application by your automation tool like similar thing that you did in selenium what you did you have written your test cases and then you have automated them right same thing that this is the purpose you automate the functionality to make sure that the functionalities are working okay now if i run it one more time you will see that it will be opening another browser be opening another browser right can you see the previous browser is there and it has opened another browser now it will get confused which one to work with now you have two instances of the browser this is one and this is another one now the, your code will not be working it will throw an error message here you will see when you have multiple instances of browser open your automation code will be confused and it will not be knowing where which browser to use so that's why it is now waiting here in line number two as you can see that it is waiting in line number two to for a certain amount of time it will be waiting here and then finally it will be throwing up error message saying that you know i'm not able to identify that object can you see cannot identify the object right so you stop it right and then uh, every time to avoid this type of issue what do you do you put another statement here before you open a new browser make sure right make sure you have closed all the existing browser system util dot close can you see close process by name and what process you want to close right if you uh, 
like how will you know what process to close right let's say that i have internet explorer open if you go there so many things opened here and let's say if you right click and start task manager right you will see that here processes right your processes if you type i Internet Explorer, right? Internet Explorer, if you click on this, I have these two things running in Internet Explorer, Google and this. And the process name for Internet Explorer is iExplore.exe. The services, let me see here, if you say not services, I'm trying to see details, right? now if you type here i can you see i explode can you see this is the this is the process name for internet explorer i explore dot exe okay so here system it will close process by name what is the name you want to close i explore dot exe right now can you see how many internet explorer uh, opened here two right you will see if you run it now before okay let me do this as well so let's put a breakpoint here what does breakpoint do you will know that as well put a breakpoint in line number three starting point of your code now if you run it okay you will see it will come here it is waiting here in line number three can you see it here in line number three mm -hmm. Is anyone speaking? Um, uh, you can like you can system it will close process by name explore chrome exe firefox you can close everything individual 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 name yeah you have to Okay, so here, um, so where are we waiting in line number three? Why are we waiting in line number three? Can anyone tell me? Because I have a breakpoint. Breakpoint means it will wait there for you. Now, can you see this particular um, step into, right? Step into, and then can you see step over? Okay, so step over. I'll be clicking on step over now. When I'm executing this particular step, can you see this line is executed, line number three, but in the meantime, do you see any more Internet Explorer browser? Here? Do you see any Internet Explorer? No, no, because all of the processor, processes are killed by this line. Now, in line number four, I am opening the browser. You will see I'm doing a step over again. Now, do you see it, it was able to open the uh, Internet Explorer browser with Google.com, right? And then let me go back to my code. Here, I'm going to highlight something here, okay? Now, <laughs> although it's supposed to be highlighting the Google for some reason, we'll try to identify later, it is highlighting somewhere else. We'll look at this. And then I have a checkpoint. Now it is going to check if all of the attributes that I made sure uh, that it is there to make sure that the object is there, it will be verifying those. Okay, so check word verification is done, and then it will highlight the what it will highlight that search text box, right? You will see that it is highlighting the text box, and then it will be typing keys. Can you see it is typing keys there? Okay, if I make it a little bit. Uh, can I move it? Maybe. Yeah. Can you see it? It has typed keys here, right? And then it will be highlighting the search Google search button. Okay, you will see that it will be highlighting this search button. And then the next thing, it will be clicking on that Google search, right? It will be clicking on that Google search, and then from the result, right? It will click on that particular link 
that is appearing in the face it has clicked on that link right actually highlighted that link now it will be clicking on that link okay now this page has loaded what is our next step our next step to verify that this page has loaded to verify this page i'm going to verify that this particular keys item is there if i see that keys object then i'll i'll say okay my verification is done so i'm going to insert another checkpoint here for this keys word okay so if i go back and then if i come here i need to add a, a particular checkpoint here after i click on that particular link to verify that cheese word so i'm going to record start recording one more time and what i'm going to record i'm going to record i'm going to insert a checkpoint again right see now let's say that instead of standard checkpoint i'm going to do a text checkpoint now okay can you see text checkpoint i'm going to select text checkpoint and what text i'm going to uh, verify okay let's say that i'm going to verify this cheese text okay so i'm going to say i'm going to click on this particular object now can you see that um, so where actually i clicked on wrong place okay let me do it one more time is um, wikipedia name is wikipedia please uh, check this no not this i'm going to do it one more time insert uh, text checkpoint and then i am going to click on this particular Again, it is taking me configure from Wikipedia click this between and this actually it is not capturing. So let's do this. First of all, let me make it activated and then let me try to do it one more time. Mm, text checkpoint and then I'm trying to add this text checkpoint. Cheese name, cheese Wikipedia and then actually let's do it in a different way so i'm going to do this text checkpoint but i will be making sure this particular text is present okay i'm going to click here now you will see uh, check that see there is a, a little bit uh, there is a little bit display between okay between uh, peter c there is a, a little bit problem with my browser settings this is the first time uh, since we are running this code we will have to adjust few parameters but for now can you see that check cheese is displayed between um, this and this right it has some weird thing here it should not be in that way i'm going to look at it but for now what text we are going to verify we are going to verify this cheese word right? this cheese text this cheese text cheese text we are going to verify okay and then i'm going to say okay now i'm done so let me go back so here you will see that we have clicked on a object first i do not need this i'm going to comment this out control here if you want to comment control m okay it will be if you want to control m or control question mark control shift m is it not uh, commenting for me one second normally commenting here is this you put a single quotation will be commenting here it will be commenting now if you want to like use a shortcut control control m should be uh, commenting but for some reason it is not working here but if you put single quote that means that line is commented out now can you see that we have a text checkpoint here to verify the uh, cheese word okay instead of text checkpoint you can also do a standard checkpoint uh, if you go there and if you insert you can do a standard checkpoint and then you can put this particular word and then say okay and then what will happen can you see now it is giving us okay the tag for this particular cheese is h1 html tag is h1 and inner text what is the inner text cheese what is the inner text cheese and i'm going to say okay 
okay so here uh, again i'm going to stop it you will see another checkpoint here that is a text checkpoint and then i have a uh, a standard checkpoint as well on that first heading okay as you can see and then i'll do a highlight as well on that particular object dot highlight i'll give you um, opportunity to ask me question now let's say that how will you in uft it has advantage advantage let's say that okay is it am i on the am i pointing out on the right object you can right click here and you can say run from step okay or you can put a breakpoint in line number 16 line number 16 right and then you can say run from step okay then what will happen if you want to execute a particular line can you see now i am uh, without executing all of this i am in line number 16 direct and then i'm going to execute only line number 16 and can you see it is highlighting that means we are like that is how you verify if you are interacting with the right object instead of going through running all the code okay and then uh, in that way like i have from this particular page i have put two checkpoint one is text checkpoint and then i put a standard checkpoint as well okay so now let me run this whole code now i have breakpoint right you will see that it will be waiting there in the breakpoint to close the browser so i am not going to run line by line instead i'm going to like if you want to run line by line you will be clicking on the clicking on that step over okay if you want to run the whole thing yeah it's good we have a checkpoint it is stopped there for us to interact i'm going to click on that place i will see how it will close all the browser and then it will be opening uh, uh, the internet explorer and then it will be opening okay and then you come here and then it is doing what it's supposed to do it is clicking on this and then it is going to verify i have another breakpoint here in line number 16 remember i'm going to click on play button again it is verifying that the cheese is there and then i'm done i'm done right so again now what you can do let's say that after you are done right you do not want to keep this browser open so what you can do copy this browser and then you come here right it dot close okay then what will happen it will after even you are done it will be okay so let's say that before you close you want to uh, take a breath you want to wait here for five seconds before you close this browser you put a five second wait time here right remove all the checkpoints all the checkpoints and then run it one more time Okay, it is uh, closing the browser in the beginning and then it is opening it is going to do whatever it's supposed to do and then right and then it will uh, before it close the browser now it will be waiting here for five seconds okay three four five right and then it will close the browser right up to this now let's let me take your question do you have any question at this point? Is automation cool? You like automation or you hate automation? Yeah, this coding is something that I'm doing now. Do you like it? Yeah. Is it high? Yeah, but again, we have to write code. You will see we are going back to code and write code. Again. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Now, how about Jaman and Amit? What is your opinion?
Is it getting too many? Mm -hmm. Baby scripting. So, guys, remember that you have written a for loop, right? So let me show you how easy it is to write a for loop here. Okay, you have written a for loop there. You type for and then press your space bar. Okay, and then for i equal to one to, let's say, thousand. Okay. And then you put here a print state. You do not have to do all of this system out print. No, you put your instead of iterator, you put i. And then here you put print i. And you have a breakpoint here, right? You run it. And then you will see, right? It is a little bit slower here. It is not super fast like Java, but still, can you see it is writing all of the numbers from one to thousand? Uh, this is what actually, if when I am saying BB scripting, this is what BB scripting is. It is easier. You li write for uh, hit your uh, press uh, space button, right? And then uh, it is. Can you see it is taking care of printing from one to one thousand? stepping one at a time one two like this right now can you see if you stop your execution right you will see that you can make uh, can you see this output window you go there you make this one a little bit bigger okay now can you see it has printed from one to right <laughs> it is pretty big list so i'll be scrolling up like this it has printed one, two, three, four, five, right? Now let's say that a step instead of one, you want to give in step two, right? And there is another thing. Let me tell you as well. If you go to tools and then option, and then here, can you see that there is a quit testing? Uh, quit testing, apply testing, duplicate testing. Text to the okay, it can well run sessions, right? Run sessions and then view result when run session ends. That is that is fine. Um, I'm trying to look for the testing declare the test and compare it. So use related parts to password and test value number of photos to show in query and number of items to show is there can I really okay okay I'm good so um so here let's say that if you put uh instead of you are starting from one and one two instead of going that you are stepping two that means one plus two three so and then plus two, three plus two, five, like this. If you want to do in that way, over there writing the for loop is a little bit complicated, but here it is much easier. So you'll see that now it will be printing a little bit different way. It will take half of the time that it took for uh, printing the previous one. Okay, we are done. So let me stop this and then go back here, right? Can you see? Now you are seeing this one, two, three because we didn't clear the output. If you go all the way, can you see after 1000, can you see from here one, three, five, seven? If you clean it, 
let's say you want to start from 10 and you want to print 10 20 right so you step 10 so that means first 10 and then 10 plus 10 and then 20 plus 10 and then 30 plus 10 like this if you so oh, the, the step is remember in java you have used i equal to i plus 2 i plus 3 right in for loop i equal to 1 and then i less than or equal to 1000 and then i equal to i plus 2 remember do you remember that here instead of i equal to i plus you put step step means it will start from 10 and then next time it will if you take a look here it has a start from 10 and then 10 plus 10 20 and then plus every time it will increase it by 10 that is what step means are we are we good guys so let's say that if you want to print from uh, instead of going from uh, small to bottom uh, bigger number let's say that your goal is to start printing from 1000 and go up to up to 10 now you have to you have to give step minus 10 then what will happen we will see now it will be printing i didn't clear the output right so you will see now uh, let me stop it okay now you will see that if you scroll down Okay, can you see it has started from 1,980, right? Let me clear the output and run it one more time. Okay, so here you will see that done, right? Let me stop it. Output and then you will see it has started from 1000 and 990 980 how did we do that we have started from 1000 we have every time we have reduced it by 10 minus means it will be reducing uh, 10 from 1000 next time i will be 990 and then from 990 it will be reducing another 10 like this so this for loop part we will do a lot lot of discussion you do not have to understand this i was just showing how easy it is here to do instead of java that's why this um, you know this tool is more easier to use now you do not have to understand this for loop i'm discussing basics i'm going to take a full session on for loop so don't worry about it so let's say that let me come back here so so here um up to this let me address your question do you have any question up to this any further question guys if you don't have a question i am going to go for the next topic here in the record and running no question right very good okay so now let's say i'm done with this test case by record and run I, now i'm going to manually do this step you will see how i do manually okay so i'm going to file and i'm going to close solution okay i'm going to say yeah i want to save it definitely now i'm done i'm going to create my next code here new test okay and i'm going to save the code in the same place okay now to say that i'm going to say i want to start the browser system util dot run right uh, what browser i want to run i want to run irexplore.exe and then what do i want to bring in internet explorer i want to run www.google.com okay okay 
Okay, let me run this particular line. Okay, now I'm not going to record this step. Instead, I'm going to write my code to handle the objects. Okay, so to do that, to do that, can you see resource? We go there, and can you see object repository manager? We go there, and then you say file, save as. Let's say that you name your you create a folder here, name it as my object repositories. Okay, and uh, inside the object repository folder, go inside here. And save this. Let's say my opt. Say okay. Now in that particular object repository, can you see this plus? You take this plus, and then let's say you want to verify this object. So you add this object. Okay. Okay. Now this is the logo right okay then let's say the first thing that we are going to do we are going to verify this logo how do you do that so i'm going to put this one aside right i'm going to make this one object repository for bigger and then i'm going to drag and drop it here okay and then i'm going to uh do I'm going to declare a variable value equal to and then I'm going to say exist so what I'm saying see if that object ex exists and up to take up to how long okay test if you see this object in the one one second no test second time no wait up till five seconds to see if the object is there if the object is there it will store a true here in that value variable it will save a true right let me show you what it does let me close this browser let me put a breakpoint here in line number in the beginning of our code okay now you can you see uh, now you uh, run your code and then you will see let me I have to do something before I do that let me stop this and let me go there let me put a another statement here wait one second and let me put a breakpoint here now let me run it okay so if I execute this line number two it will be opening the browser let me execute it has opened the browser and then let me go back to my program right what is my program this now let me show you one cool thing here let's say if i make it bigger can you see local variables click on that local variables do you have any local variable at this point here in the list here no right you don't have a local variable but when you execute line number three Right, execute line number three and Google object was not found in the object repository. It is complaining about the Google object was not found in the object repository, right? So I'm going to stop. I'll have to fix this issue first. So I have created this object repository. I saved it, but saving this is not enough. So what I'll have to do, can you see action? You will have to right click on your action. You have to associate this repository you will have to double click on this and then you will see that if you click on plus now can you see this object repository here then only it will work okay you will have to bring the object repository to your code okay let me close this browser and let me run it one more time So you come here, browser. OK, 
Okay, it has opened the browser. Let me go back to your UFT. Now in your local variables, you do not have anything, but when you run this line, can you see in your local variable value equal to true? Guys, can you see value equal to true? Because I'm saying browser, Google, and that Google image, make sure that that image exists. If that exists, then the whole thing will return a true and that true will be stored in that value variable. We call it variable. Variable means container. In programming language, variable means it is a container. You can store different things in that container. So for now, we have stored true in that container. Now, so how will I? Let's do the next step. So how will I check if that like if that object is there, if that object is there, I'm good. If that object is not there, I have to make sure I'm failing the test, right? So that is why I'm going to write a if statement. If, and press your space bar, and if value equal to true, if value equal to true, right? I'm asking, make sure what you have inside value, if it is true. If it is true, if the condition is true, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight that image. I'm going to say, I'm going to say print the logo displayed here. And then I'm going to say, uh, and then after if, if it is not displayed if value is not true right if value is not true then what it will do right I'm going to put a else statement here else if value is not true then you are going to say the logo is Again, I'll have to uh, run it. Let me run it. And guys, do not get overwhelmed. I'm covering a lot of things. Let me know if you are enough for today. I'll stop it so that you can, I'll be sending you this recording so that you can practice. Okay, so here, I'm going to open the browser. And then I'm going to come here. I'm going to execute this line. This line, if it get this object, right, then it will store a value equal to true. Now, I'm checking if value equal to true. I know value equal to true, so the condition will be true. So, it will come here, right. It will print that message in the output, and then it will be highlight that object. Okay? It will highlight that object. Although it is not highlighting in the right place, we will figure it out but it will highlight the object and then we are done. Okay. Now, um, let me just uh, real quick do something. Let me go to my control panel real quick check something
difference in personalization here. System and security, hardware, and what else? Business, this uh, show hidden from environment system. I'm trying to uh, configure my display settings. I'm looking for appearance yeah appearance and personalization yeah and the screen reader phone easily access where is that i displayed the model i need to do this i need to do this personalize very good right click and then display settings and then here 120 percent right let me make it Person and then I can close this. I close this and now let me go back to my code and let me run my code one more time. I have to close this browser and do my code, please. Let me run it one more time. Opening the browser and then I'm going to verify this. Okay, I have uh, this and then it is displayed and then now I'm going to do the highlight. Still, it is not displaying properly. Still, there is a problem in the display settings. Let me go back to my browser and here in the settings, can you see it has become 180 percent? Now I have to make it 100 percent. Right. Now, if I go back to my object repository and then display, if I highlight this, right, uh, this particular thing, uh, let me see, still it is not. So there is a display related issue with my browser and stuff. I'm trying to figure it out in uh, settings. And, uh, Internet Explorer. Yeah, but hundred percent with hundred percent, it should work. It should work. But let me check one thing. Extensions. Right, let me see. extension here uh, developer tools uh, I'm trying to get something guys give me I'm sorry it's taking a little while but let me figure this out manage add-ons add-ons and then accelerators where is my extension google.com and then web is extensions and internet display extension so open and transfer select the tools button and then select manage add-ons okay alter tools and then manage add-ons i was there and then let me see uft agent right uft agent is this uh, enable yeah this is enable dhu manager yeah this is enable okay so <clears throat> there is an issue we'll try to take a look like why it is not pointing to the right object probably i'll try to get a solution later but for now, let's move forward. Not all of the object it will do this, particularly it will, with some object it will be pointing uh, incorrectly. But for now, we have this 100%. Uh, now, so let's say that, let's say that I'm saying that 
that Google object, right? That Google object, if I go back to my repository, right? If I go back to my repository and then I'm going to change something. Let's say HTML tag. Uh, if you take a look, it, it is using few attribute to identify that object, right? I'm going to change few things here. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this, remove this, right? And then I'm going to save. And if I try to highlight this, it's not able to identify that object now, right? Can you see, I like it is using certain things to identify that object. I have removed all of this attribute from the attribute list. Now it is not able to identify. Right. Now you run your code one more time. That is the reason I'm showing you this. So now you run your code one more time. And then you do this. It will be opening the browser. In the browser, you have the object that is totally fine. You come here, you execute this line. Now can you see it is waiting here? I want up. It is waiting here. It will be waiting here up to five seconds, and within five seconds, according to the description that we have in the, according to the description that we have in the object repository, if you come to the local variables, can you see the value is false now? Why it is false? Who can help me understanding this? Because I have removed the attribute and my kind of my recording is not taking as well like can you see I can see value equal to false my recording is not uh, doing the whole screen as well so okay so we'll uh, figure out in the next session now can you see value equal to false here right value equal to false why it is false can anyone explain me again I have deleted the attribute I have deleted the attribute that's why now by those attribute it is not able to identify the object now value equal to false uh, it was not able to identify that google image so now value equal to true is it true if you replace the value what is the value of value is it true or false false now false equal to true is it true false equal to true false equal to true is it is not true so that means if condition the condition is now false okay if it is false it will not execute these two line it will go to the else block you will see that it will be going to the else block can you see now the logo is not displayed right let's finish this execution right let's finish this so our execution is done but can you see our test is still passing can you see it is passing can you see this guys that that check mark test is passing so so now if the object is not there i'm opening the browser my code is not able to verify the object for some reason let's say intentionally or unintentionally we have changed something if the object is not there then i my test will have to be failed so to make your test fail you have to do reporter dot report event can you see reporter dot reboot event and then you put here oh uh, reporter dot reboot event you have might fail and then where it failed you put some description let's say that um, logo verification and then you come here you put the description not Able to verify the logo. Right? Reporter dot report event. Now you run your code one more time. And remember this browser every time I have to close manually. So I'm not going to close it manually. Right? I'm going to say system util dot close. I made a spelling mistake here. System util dot close process by name. And what process I want to close? I want to close. My I'll take a look ready later on. So I explore that object 
now you run it one more time we'll close the browser then it will open the browser with home now here it is looking for that uh, google logo it was not able to verify now can you see now your test is not passing it is failing your test can you see so if you are not getting a particular object if you want to fail your test case what is your statement reporter dot report event and you put mix mic fail and then uh, if you go to your log right if you go to your run result right you will see that here the failure it is putting run error logon verification remember you put logon verification and then you put a message not able to verify the logo you will be able to get the details here you will be able to see the details from here okay now let's come back this is not a like i just showed you how to fail your test case okay now you get let's get back to the object repository intentionally we have changed the description of this object right how will i um, rem uh, you know remediate this can you see this actually this uh, this thing has made the icons very smaller so what i'm going to do i'm going to change back to this 120 percent so that everyone can see uh, right click display settings and then from here i'm going to say 125 percent and i'm going to close it okay now uh, it will be more clear in terms of that now here um so in this object repository uh, that google logo we have damage that object how will i correct this object can you see this small icon here update from application you click on that update from application and then you go to the application you can if you do not see the application hold control and click on the application and then you come here now i'm going to click on it and i'm going to say yeah good object you selected in your uh, object is not the same so we have to we click on the wrong place so i'll select this one more time and this is the object right this is the object this image yeah this is the correct object now can you see everything is back can you see how i have updated the object if you run it one make sure you save it you run it one more time you will see that your code will be it will not fail anymore it will pass so Yeah, it is closing the browser opening the browser and then it will be verifying uh, it will be highlighting that verify first of all it will verify that logo and if it is there it will be highlighting the logo actually here what is happening here google search logo verification it failed again let us take a look at our code so google exist right google google exist it is still it is not able to get it probably it took more than five seconds for the page to be loaded so instead of five seconds let's put 10 seconds and let me run the code again so it waited up to five seconds to get the object but what is that okay let me run it one more time and then i'll come back so here it is going to close the browser first it is going to open the browser right now can you see although it is not pointing to the right place but it is verifying that particular object and then now can you see it is passed and if you take a look the steps right can you see uh, we have this and we have a you know google exist and then if you click on this particular thing right repository you see all of the details from your test okay so as a summary you see that pass to there is no failure okay now let's come back uh, let me see if you have any further question up to this i'm going to go for a couple of more things and then we'll be done for our session today but before i do that let me take if you have any further question up to this
Uh, let me see. Uh, you typed something here. What is the problem, Nahid Bhai? Okay, let me uh, pause this recording and then I'm going to ask you to share. But before I go to your screen, Nahid Bhai, everyone, whatever we have discussed so far, what is your independent opinion about it? We use if else a lot to make sure that if I am looking for something, if it is there. This is called a you know conditional statement. You will learn, but I'm showing some initial stuff, and then we will bring initially. You know we'll have more sessions to bring other things. But um, I want to take an opinion from uh, Jaman and uh, Omit as well and Nita. So can you tell me, guys, how are you, how you are feeling at this point? Yeah, that is correct. Now, how about uh, Jaman? Thank you for feedback, Nita. Jaman, can you hear me? Yeah. You understand what we did? Okay. How about Omit? Oh, he's not in. But does it interest you? Okay, that's good. How about Nabed? Very good. Okay. Okay, so um, let me, I think we can keep up to this. I'll be sending you this recording. Let me stop this recording. Now I'm going, I, that will be all for today.